Okay, welcome back everybody to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to automatically set up a LEGO Universe server. Um, if you want to follow along, um, that's fine. If you want to go ahead and read it by yourself, you can head over to my GitHub gist and just read through the instructions. Um, also below the gist, you have the automated setup tool that we're going to be using. Um, and with an explanation of how to use it. Furthermore, um, if you do not want to read the gist, you can head over to Medium and just look up this article name and you will come across the article that will also go over step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the server. We're going to be rolling with the gist and we're going to be using this automated setup tool. So you want to get things started. Um, by opening up a command line console. I'm going to be using PowerShell. You can also use CMD. Um, do note that it is better to run the server on a Linux server rather than in a virtual machine or in the Windows subsystem for Linux, both because the server is most likely going to be up 24 seven and because running the server in the Windows subsystem for Linux, like we're going to be doing today, um, has in the past caused me a couple blue screens, so I wouldn't go that way. Um, but you can do whatever you like. I'm going to be showcasing um, the setup process in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux, you just want to go into your search bar on Windows and look up Turn Windows Features On or Off. Then you want to scroll down and tick the box that says uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Then you just want to hit OK. It's going to start looking for updates. Then it's going to be like you need to restart your computer. You're going to be like fine and just hit the restart button. And after you restart, just make sure the box is actually ticked. And if it is ticked, you can head over to the Microsoft Store and just look up Ubuntu and click this one, which will open up this page. Then you just want to install it and that's that. Now to actually get into Ubuntu, uh, you can either open the Ubuntu app, which is now installed, or you can in your command line console use one of two commands, which we're going to be taking a look at in a minute. Um, for now, you just want to close this and head over to your command line console. Now in the command line console, um, if you've never used it before, uh, you can use CD to change directory. Um, I've created a directory under downloads called Lego Universe Temp. In order to navigate into this directory, you just go, want to go up here in the path and click somewhere where there is no name. Uh, where there's nothing clickable and just click and copy that. Then in your console, just type in CD and paste that. And that will take you into the directory. Now there are two things that we need to move into this directory. One of them is the locale directory, which contains the locale.xml. And the other one is the res file, which is going to be used by the server. You just want to make sure that both of these are in the directory that we're going to be working in. Now with both of these in here, we can go ahead and head into the Windows subsystem for Linux. So in order to get into the subsystem for Linux, you want to enter the command WSL, which stands for Windows subsystem Linux. And you just want to hit enter and it's going to launch the Windows subsystem for Linux in the current directory that you're inside of. If WSL does not launch any version of Linux, it is because you need to go through the setup process. So instead of typing in WSL, you type in Ubuntu, hit enter. It will ask you for a username and a password for your Linux user. You'll provide these and then you'll just type exit to get out of it and then just type in WSL to launch the Windows subsystem for Linux in the current directory. 
Now, if you want to manually get into the directory, um, the C directory of your computer is mounted under slash mount slash C. So you can CD into your C directory by typing in CD slash mount slash C. Um, and obviously all the other directories are just subdirectories following that. So the downloads directory would be under users, your username and downloads and so on. Now in order to set up the server, we want to go into the gist and just click on this below right here. And this will link us to this file here. We're just going to click on raw. Uh, which is going to give us the file in raw format so we can download it using the link. So we just want to click on raw and we want to copy this link. So you can see it is displaying the file buildserver.sh in raw format so that when we take this URL and download the file, it's immediately going to download. It's not going to download a web page. So you just want to copy this and head over into the Windows subsystem for Linux and just type in curl tag O. Uh, curl is a tool with which you can make web requests. Uh, tag O is used to download the file and save it using the name that was already on the server. Make sure the O is capital. If the O is small, you have to provide the name yourself. So just going to type in curl, tag O, and then paste in the link. And just hit enter. Now theoretically, we could just execute this file. However, there are two changes I'm going to make because we're in the Windows subsystem for Linux. We just type, uh, we just want to type in nano, which is a text editor. And we're going to type the file name, which is build.bitserver.sh hit enter and scroll down to where it says make right here. Now I have four CPU cores in my current computer. Actually I have six and I want to make use of these. So I'm just going to add the minus J, um, which is going to allow the compiler to use multiple CPU cores. And I'm going to give it four cores. And then because we're in the Windows subsystem for Linux, I don't want it to immediately run the server after we're done, as that would probably cause a blue screen. So we're just going to go all the way down to the bottom. And where it says master server tag A, we just want to comment that out using a hashtag symbol. Now, in order to save an exit, you want to hit Control X. You want to type in Y and then you want to hit enter. And now we can go ahead and launch the script. Now, before we launch it, make sure that the files locale and res are actually in the directory that you're currently inside of. Actually, you even want to copy the path of the current directory. And then in order to execute the build server file, you just want to type in dot slash, which means in this directory, I want to run the program and then the program name, which is buildserver.sh, and just hit enter. Now it's going to say that the setup is going to start in 10 seconds. Just give it some time. In the meantime, you might want to check out my social links. Uh, now it's going to prompt you for your a Linux password, so you just want to enter that. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to update all of your um, system libraries. Then it's going to download all of the programs that are necessary to actually build the server and deploy it. Then what it's doing right here is it downloaded the server. Now this is CMake, which generates a make file, which we can use to actually build the server. And then make starts generating the server, uh, building it. Now, this is going to take a while. One eternity later. 
Okay, so after it uh, finished building the server, it will go ahead and start MySQL. Um, then it will actually create the database for you and add the user and everything that needs to be added. Um, as you see in my case, it errored out because they already exist. Um, the next step in the installation is that it will ask you to enter the path to your client's res folder. Um, now note that you should start with the first um, slash, you know, denoting the root directory, and it does not support the hyphen, um, the, the tilde. So what you want to do is you want to paste in the path that we had beforehand, and you want to add to that the res directory. So you want to paste in the path to the folder um, where you started off the setup process, and you want to add the res directory as it's a subfolder in that folder, and you just want to hit enter. Now the rest of the setup process is also automated. It's going to copy over all the files that it needs. Um, it will then unzip the nav meshes, as you see. Uh, now it will go ahead and read the FDB database and convert it to SQLite for the server. And finally, in the end, it's going to prompt you and ask you what IP address you'd like the server to run. Um, now, based on um, what kind of machines you want connecting to your server, this is going to be a different value. So if you're only going to be running it on the same machine, the IP address is going to be set to localhost. If you're going to be running it with other people on your network, it will be your IPv4 address. If it will be running publicly, this will be your public IP address. We're going to be running it locally. So we're going to set it to localhost, um, localhost, or you can also go ahead and use 127.0.0.1 and you just hit enter. And as you see, it's automatically going to set up all the INI files and theoretically it would have launched a server right here to let us create the admin account. Um, I already have an admin account, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then it's going to say set up complete exiting and it's going to throw you out. Now, if you do a quick LS to see the directories, you'll notice that now we have the dark flame server directory. And if we CD into that and LS again, you'll notice that we have a build directory, which contains the server that we just built. Um, we can go into that directory and in here we're going to have a bunch of executable files. Now in order to add your admin account, you want to execute dot slash master server and tag A and then it's going to prompt you to enter the credentials for the um, admin. In order to run the server, all you have to do is type dot slash master and hit enter. Before we do that, we want to make sure that the um, MariaDB server, um, database is running. So we're going to check the service. We're going to say Zuru service MariaDB status. Um, on Windows, this isn't going to work um, in the subsystem for Linux because it is not a service. So on Linux, you need to execute a different command. Um, in the Windows subsystem for Linux, you need to execute a different command. You can look the command up right here. Um, so we just go ahead and zero, etc. Service. Actually, we just mistyped the service name. This should run. What are you? An idiot sandwich. And as you can see, it is running. Now we can actually stop that and start it again just to showcase how that is done. 
because whenever you launch a Windows subsystem for Linux, it's not going to be started. And if you attempt to start the server without running the service, you will actually cause a blue screen. So you want to stop the service. And you can start the service using sudo service mysql start. And then you can check the status using status. And you can see it running. Now in order to run the server, all that's left to do is type in dot slash master server. And that will run the server. As you can see, it is ready to accept users. Now the next step would be to just launch your client and log in with that admin account you created and you're ready to go. Now for further server automation, you can head on the repository and just go to the section that says automation. Um, this has some neat features such as automatic backups, um, automatically keeping the server up to date, um, and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to check this out, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Um, you can also scroll down and get an overview of how the networking works. And way at the bottom, you also have some commands. They are more on the dark flame repo and some special items such as the jetpack and the insta kill hammer that you can give yourself. Well, other than that, that is pretty much it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and leave a like so we can grow the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.